Welcome back to another 2v2 battle. Uh, this one is actually not played with uh, Surreal, but I have an ally here with the Dwarf player. I am playing as the Empire, and we are facing off against the Warriors of Chaos and the Vampire Counts. My army here is we have the Tatter Souls, then three Flagellants. We also have four Halberdier groups spread around. We have the Hammer of the Witches, because, well, facing off against the Vampire Count, there's potentially a lot of large creatures that could be coming my way. We have one of the Knights of the Blazing Sun over here. We have a Warrior Priest on a Barded Seed, and then a Bright Wizard on a Mount as well. We have a Mortar Team, which I never used, but I brought in this battle. And then also the Sterling's Revenge, which is the um, Stalk, Vanguard Deployment, Armor Piercing Free Company. Most free companies, well, the free companies are not armor piercers, Sterling's Revenge is. And I brought them because we're facing off against the Warriors of Chaos, which in most cases are going to bring a lot of heavy armor. Also, Grave Guard you can deal with as well. Uh, for the Dwarf player here, we have two hammers, one on each flank. We have a couple long beards set back here. Uh, four cannons, I think, and then an organ gun is also in here. We have a Master Engineer, two gyrocopters, a generic Lord, then these three Thunderers, a lot of of artillery from the dwarven player for the chaos player we have a generic lord on a flying zombie not zombie dragon but a chaos dragon we have a hell cannon we have a couple chosen with great weapon. actually i think that may be the only one we have one chosen with great weapons a couple warhounds the three chosen here and then a chosen warrior with halberdier we also have a death warrior or death sorcerer and then a dragon ogre shagoth a very small elite force that's going to be going up against a lot of armor piercing cannons We'll see how that goes. Um, then over here for the vamp. Oh, I forgot. I also have Outriders out here in Vanguard Deploy. We have a bunch of zombies, including the Tithe, which are a really good um, tarpet unit. We have the Claw of Nagash. We have a assortment of Grave Guard mixed with uh, Stern Guard here. These two have great weapons. This one is just the Stern's Guard. We have three Varguys, one of which is the renowned one, the I don't know, Devils of Swartz Swartzhofen. I don't use them that much. Uh, then we also have the Strigoi Ghoul King mounted on their Terra Geist. We also have a Black Knight. Actually, two Black Knights with lances back here. And that is their army. So we get a couple shots in the very beginning, but those are just against zombies. Because as soon as the battle started, they just went on the closest target. I did not order them to attack zombies. We're going to pull out to the middle of the field here. I'm going to try and assign my Mortar Team back here to fire on the Chaos Warriors. Meanwhile, the Hammer of the Witches, I think that shot just went automatically against zombies. But I'm going to have it mostly shooting at the Black Knights and then the Claw of Nagash. So that's what the Hammer of Witches is going to be doing. You can see the two Black Knights and the Varguys, the Strigoi Ghoul King, are all going around the left flank. These Varguys think for a moment to charge my Outriders, but I think they got scared when they saw me stopping to shoot at them. Uh, if the Varguys kept going and if they caught me, that would have been really bad for me. But they decided to start withdrawing, which is why I stood there as long as I did. I think these Outriders, I believe, I give them an order to shoot the Claw of Nagash after this. I'm going to start repositioning some of my soldiers to receive a charge from potentially the Black Knights over here with the Lances. Moving. You can see me starting to get some shots in the Claw of Nagash. The Claw of Nagash has a lot of regeneration, um, but I'm trying to just overload it with a much too much damage for it to regenerate through. Armor Piercing does really well against the Claw. Here come the Black Knights. So their idea here, I, I didn't realize until right now. I thought they were going to go all the way around from a Hammer of the Witches. But no, they were just cutting through the forest to try and get to my Outriders. So seeing this, I'm immediately going to withdraw past our line of Flagellants. Right here, I'm trying to uh, intercept them, but the, these Flagellants are not strong or fast enough. I could have sent my Knights of the Blazing Sun, but I did not. Meanwhile, the flying creatures are now going to be flying over my army. Withdrawing my Outriders. Hammer of the Witches gets a couple shots on these Black Knights. Now I'm pulling back my lines, seeing the Var guys coming in. We got a shot off on these Var guys, and now I'm just moving my my troops into a position to cover my cannon and my mortar teams. As these Black Knights charge the Flagellant line, I'm going to charge both more behind him. Cast all of his spells, including all of his buffs. Back here, the Var guys are going after the Hammer of the Witches. Another one will be going after the mortar team. Here comes another Black Knight charge into some Flagellants. Behind them will be the zombies. There goes a banishment from Volkmar. My Hammer of the Witches is going to be focusing on this Call of Nagash when they are freed from these Var guys, which will be soon because they're being shot up and killed by a group of Albadiers. More Var guys flying over. My Warrior Priest of Sigmar has their buff on. These Black Knights are going to be eventually destroyed. There's the Shigoi Ghoul King. We also have a Necromancer back there that I forgot to mention. This group is going after my Mortar Team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Went too far. Too far. And my renowned Sterling 
free company there is going to be firing into their backs. Now, in this instance, um, the normal free company would have probably done better against them, but it's still fine. We'll slow it down here, see what's going on. The Graveguard and the Zombies are... Well, actually, I think it's just the Zombies. Graveguard are coming in next, but they are getting into our lines. My um, Blazing Sun Knights charge the Sternsmen because they have regeneration, so they take bonus damage versus flaming attacks, which the Blazing Knights do. The problem is I forget to pull them out after I do this for a little while, so they're actually going to kind of start losing that engagement there. Here's the renowned group of our guys still flying around. We did deal with one of the three groups of our guys. The second one is being dealt with over there by our free company. Claw Nagash is now into our lines. I'm going to be shooting it with the... There it is. The Hammer of the Witches. Which has bonus damage versus large and armor piercing. As our Flagellants continue to hold the front line. Strigoi Ghoul King is going to be going after our Hammer of the Witches now. Oh, wait, wait. No, no, no. I think... Well, I think it does eventually. But over here, my Outriders are being chased by this group of our guys, the renowned ones. I have a group of Halberdiers nearby to try and support. So our Outriders don't get destroyed by them. Our free company is still dealing with the third group of um, Var guys over there. Now, unfortunately, they do make one of my groups flee, and since we're so close to the edge, this group of Outriders is going to is going to flee off the battlefield, which sucks. I was trying to prevent that, but it didn't happen. You can see I have a group of Halberdiers covering our Hammer of the Witches because they had so much flying around, uh, so that's going to keep there. The Stern Spinner around chasing my Nice Little Blazing Sun, which I pulled out. I think they catch me because I wasn't noticing. And for the most part, my Bright Wizard is casting buff spells on our front line and over here to help the Sterling's Revenge Company against these Vargeist and the Strigoi Ghoul King. I'm also moving my Warrior Priest over there to support with his spells as well. And the Claw and the Gash is still... should be getting shot at by the Hammer of the Witches. And I think I send my Outriders to shoot them as well. Oh, and a Flaming Fire's Ball spell. Boom! Which does a lot of damage. And then also it's a Strigoi Ghoul King, which I didn't notice. So that Fireball spell did so much damage to that Claw. And so now the Strigoi King is going to try and kill our Bright Wizard. Claw and Nagash is going to withdraw. There goes the Necromancer supporting the battle lines. Over here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. It's about to blow up. Let's get that explosion. Yeah! F you, Claw and Nagash. Uh, over here, these group of Crypt Ghouls, which I didn't even... I forgot to mention they were even in this fight. So I forgot about them earlier, and uh, I didn't even notice them in the fight until they were right here. They're not even the renowned group, but there they are. There's some Crypt Ghouls going against my Sterling's Revenge. My Warrior Priest will be sent in there soon. Over here, we are wrapping up the renowned Vargeist with our Halberdiers and our Outriders. Trigoi Ghoul King is into our Hammer of Witches. We're bringing in our Halberdiers to try and pin them down. And also moving my Bright Wizard away from them. Over here, the Blazing Sun Knights are battling still against the Sternsmen, doing some damage, but they're also taking a lot of damage in return. And then Volkmar has just been supporting this line with his spells throughout this entire battle and doing a couple uh, charges here and there. And the Flagellants, there goes the Banish spell. The Flagellants still holding the line. Hold to the very end. That's why I love them. They are a great Tarpon unit that also deals uh, potentially a lot of damage. Shigoi King is going to get out of the fight again. He does push off our um, operators, but we're going to get him back on the two cannons that are still remaining. Soon-ish. Over here, we are winning our battle against the Crypt Ghouls. They are starting to lose their morale. With the support of the Warrior Priests. And now a group of Halberdiers is coming for a rear charge. Warrior Priest is going to hold it down. Our Outriders running away from the Strigoi Ghoul King is being a nuisance. And here comes some more Vargeist into them as well. I'm trying to get our Halberdiers nearby to pin them down. Also our Nice Little Basin Sun are now on their way. So yeah, these Crypt Ghouls are going to eventually get destroyed. The front line here is still um, mixed in with some zombies and the Graveguard. This unit of Graveguard is fresh going up, up against our Flagellants and the Halberdiers nearby. This is a fight that those Graveguard are going to win if unsupported. Meanwhile, this player is doing really good with the Shrigul King doing just hit and runs here and there trying to shut down our units. Our two remaining cannons are now back and operational. Volkmar doing a couple charges here.
And there comes the Ghoul King again. Now they're trying to shut down Vokmar. There comes some more spells from Vokmar. Such a cool spell. Over here, Outrider still being chased by this annoying group of Var guys. We have some Sterlings nearby. This group was freed up because the ghouls are now dead. Warrior Priest went over here to support the fight against these fresh Grave Guard. And the Blazing Knights also did a charge as well. Var guys now getting cleaned up by the Outriders and the Sterling uh, or the Free Company. Stern's men still in the fight. They are a really hardy unit. But now we have them mostly surrounded by these, um, the Tattersouls and then our Halberdiers. Right now I'm going to be trying to pull Volkmar the Grim out because he's taking a lot of damage from these Trikoi Ghoul King and these Graveguard. And I do not want him to die. Casting another banishment just on this Necromancer, you know, just because. A little middle finger to that Necromancer before we leave the front lines. Now I'm trying to focus fire down on the Strigoi Ghoul King. He's almost dead. We get a charge with the Bright Wizard to try and hold him down. And he falls. Goodbye, Strigoi Ghoul King. Now all they have left are Crumbling Graveguard and this, this uh, Necromancer. Who's getting shot at by our <laughs> Free Company. Getting charged by our Warrior Priest. I think he just died. There you go. He, he just fell. And that is my fight for the most part. So let's stop it here. And we will watch the Dwarven fight and see what happens after this. Here we have this group of gyrocopters going out to try and harass these uh, Chaos Warhounds, but they are going to get intercepted by this Chaos Lord. In the very beginning of the fight, this uh, Hell Cannon went from full health to almost zero in one salvo of all of the cannons that the Dwarf player brought. Then the Dwarf player is now focusing on the Chaos Chosen lines that are advancing on their position. These gyrocopters are, I believe, getting routed off the field by the um, Chaos Lord over here. These poor gyrocopters. They don't have much of a chance in melee. They came from behind. And then they're going to be routed out the field. You can see these Chosen are already taking a lot of damage from the cannon fire. They have a long way to run across an open field against the cannons of the dwarves. Also, the organ gun is now firing into their position, which is another great tool to kill uh, Chosen. They are going to be buffed by that Master Engineer who has the Reload Calibration skill. It should be popping soon-ish. Here comes a charge of the Chaos Warhounds. To try and silence that organ gun, and then they're like, nope! And they're like, nope! I guess because they see the Longbeards nearby. Hell Cannon is still operational. Um, it's done some damage to this organ gun, which is a good target. Well, I mean, a lot of these are good targets. You got the Longbeards, you got the Thunderers, all these cannons. Hammerers actually would probably be the better target. Chaos Army still marching forward. The Dwarves are set up on this little here here, so the Thunderers have a clear line of fire over the heads of their uh, Longbeard brethren. You can see them getting some shots in on the Chaos Sword as they fly by. Here comes a rear charge from the uh, Puppies, the Chaos Puppies. Now here, they get hung up on these Thunderers. Right here... If this player is watching or anybody else is watching, don't worry about the Thunderers in this situation. Just ring or ride your Chaos Warhounds far around like what this player is doing here. But instead of going into these Thunderers where there are Hammers and Longbeards nearby, just go a little bit further and then charge in here. Two puppy units charged here and here will disrupt this entire cannon formation so that they cannot fire. In fact, earlier in the battle, um, try if you can. Just sacrifice the puppies just throw their lives away it's okay in the situation to immediately ride them around and just cause chaos here for as long as they can stay alive because forever how long that is that's a less amount of time that you're chosen have to worry about getting focused down by the cannons because look at this this is a group of chosen that's almost destroyed this group is taking a lot of damage this group is almost at 50 percent this group is taking a lot of damage so don't be afraid to sacrifice the puppies. This is what they're for in this particular situation, is just to disrupt all of this. All of this angriness that the dwarves have. So the Chosen that are making it, or that are making it, are about to charge into a group of Longbeards. They're also getting focused down by these Thunderers, and the Organ Gun is still operational.
Dragon Ogre Shagoth makes it into the lines, but they are going to be um, flanked by this group of uh, hammers. So even after they make it across this open field, they still have to deal with a very strong front line of dwarves. Hammers are no joke. Even for Chosen, it's going to be a rough battle for them. We have the Death Sorcerer here as well. Dragon Ogre Shagoth. It kind of also made a mistake here, I think. It went through the Longbeard line. Hold on. Went through the Longbeard line because it has a lot of mass to do that. But then they allow themselves to get stopped at these Thunderers. Normally, a Thunderer is a good target. But again, these cannons are just free to fire on whatever, including that Dragon Ogre Shagoth. So, it's... Um, you gotta send something, send your Chaos Swords, anything, to shut these down, especially when they're buffed up by a Master Engineer. Just my thoughts. Anyway, the Chosen are going to just duke it out with these long beers. Here comes the second group of hammers into the flanks of these Chosen over here. I believe the um, Death... Sorcerer casts a Soul Blight on the Dwarven line here at, at some point. The Hell uh, Cannon back here was destroyed by the cannons just moments ago. And now the cannons are focusing down on this one remaining group of Chosen with great weapons that are approaching the battle lines. Chosen are very strong, but they can't survive a lot of cannon fire. Woo! That Dowie went flying. To give you a view of what's going on here, the puppies have been dealt with. So this flank is now, for the most part, clear, except for the one group of Chosen that's still over there. The Chaos Sword is dealing with this group of Gyro Bombers, or Gyrocopters. The Dwarf Lord, I believe, is engaged against the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. They're just nearby, buffing the um, their front line of Longbeards and Hammers. And look at this. The focus fire of those cannons. This entire group of Chosen were almost completely destroyed and almost their morale is breaking. So again, the cannons... You just gotta find a way to shut them down. Do your best. Because this group of Chosen is almost destroyed and they just got to the battle. This group of Longbeard is actually getting surrounded, though. You can see them pulling the cannons away from here because of the Chosen nearby. Probably a smart move. But then we still have these group of Hammers nearby that are just going to give these Chosen a bad day. There goes the Shagoth. Morale has been broken. If you look at the hit points right now, you can see the Chosen are slowly being whittled away by the front line of the Dwarves. Yes, It is a slugfest. Dwarven Lord just kind of hanging out. Chaos Sword getting another charge in against these hammers. They have done repeated charges against them, but the hammers still stand. There's really not much left of the uh, Chaos to show, just besides these Chosen and the Chaos Sword right now. You can see the um, Chaos Sorcerer over there has also shattered. Some of the Chosen are still remaining strong. But it is not looking good.
And you can see that even the Chosen is going to start to rout. The Chaos Lord is now the only one staying in the fight. My fight just got wrapped up, so I'm starting to move my forces over here. But then the Chaos Sword is also going to shatter, only leaving this group of um, one Hell Cannon alive. And then we are going to get the victory. Good game to my opponents and to my ally, whose name is JT Coffee. Good game, JT Coffee. Volkmar, 125 kills with the Banishment and Melee. 57 kills in a Warrior Priest, I don't think is too shabby. Um, again, I definitely recommend always putting them on a Barded Steed if you have 200 gold left over. It doubles their armor, makes them just so much more effective in Melee. Um, if you don't want them to be in Melee, though, then don't worry about it. Well, I mean, still, there's the maneuverability, though. I, 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 at least put them on the other Steed to make them faster. I think it's 100 for the Unarmored one. The Flagent line did really well. They usually do. Um, the Halberdiers, I think, did really well. This group only got 11 kills, but I think it was the one in reserve and didn't really do too much other than fights. Um, off the Shigoi Ghoul King, some bar guys, things like that. The Tattersouls, 130 kills. They were fighting against zombies and then also the Sternsmen, the Grave Guard there at the end, so they did really well. 31 kills on the Sterling's Revenge. Eh. They fought off some bar guys for the most part. That's all they really did. Knights of the Basin Sun, a ton of kills before they were, um, finished. The Outriders, not much. They did do a lot of damage to the Claw of Nagash to... This should go with Ghoul King. Because, like, I had them focusing on the very high hit point tough units instead of having them shoot at the Grave Guards. So, yeah, their kills are not going to be that high. Um, 20 kills on the Mortar Team. 48 on the Hammer of the Witches. I think it's pretty good. For JT Coffee here, this sword I don't think was really in combat for long. It only fought against the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Mas Master Engineer did what it did. It popped Ballistics Calibration, which then gave all these units the high amount of kills they have. Again, this is a chosen army. I know this may not look crazy it's like oh that's only 53 kills 53 chosen kills like this is this is insane like how many did they deploy 595 look out at the amount of that were taken out by the the um cannons thunderer 79 this hammer group 86 like the, it's yeah they did really well so the master engineer was definitely worth it in this uh, army composition and overall they did excellent for my vampire account enemy here, zombies did, I think, really well fighting against the Tattered Souls and the um, Flagellants. The Grave Guard did really well. Sternsmen, they held a long time and managed to kill a lot of my Blazing Sun Knights. So I think they did pretty good. The Black Knights killed a lot of Flagellants before they destroyed. And the Vargas managed to shut down my Mortar Team for a while. They harassed my Outriders, even ran one off the field and eventually, I think, ran the other one off the field too by the end. Um, so they did really good at harassing my back line along with the Strigoi Ghoul King. The Nagash did some damage before I focused it down, so that was, that was pretty good. 50 kills in the Chaos Lord, 12 in the Chaos Sorcerer, not bad. A decent amount of kills for the Chosen, considering how many actually made it to the front lines. The puppies kind of got thrown away against those Thunderers and Hammers. Dragon or Shagoth, 43 kills against mostly Hammers, which is pretty good. And then 44 kills for the Hell Cannon. Um... Instead of focusing on the Orkin Gun, which I think is what it was doing through most of the match, it sh probably should have been focusing on the Hammerers. Against Chosen, if they make it to the front line, the Hammerers are going to be one of the highest priority. After that, I'd, I'd say probably the Thunderers, and then worry about the Longbeards. I think that would be my priority target. Or you can go Thunderers, Hammerers, then Longbeards. I don't know, whichever one you want to silence first, but not the... Um, not the artillery. But anyway, good game again to my opponents and to my ally. I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you all next time. Take care.